Hello, skinnies. Hi, skinnies. Nick here. Let's see. Mr. Hollywood's in the background. Come say hi, Mr. Hollywood. Hi, Mr. Hollywood. <laughs> so, last week, Mezzy and I went live showing off how to prepare your Christmas fruit for Christmas puddings because last year, Mezzy was very gracious in that she loaned, well, gave us, published, um, her Christmas pudding recipe that's famous. She sells these every year. Um, and, you know, we came up with an awesome gluten-free variation as well. Mm -hmm. And it was so popular last year. Um, so we thought this year we would go live showing the cooking of it along the way so that we could just demystify Christmas puddings. Yeah. Because they're not hard. Not hard at all. Um, it's just one of those things that once you buy the stuff the first year, every year you'll have it. Yeah. And it's a great way to create homemade gifts. Uh, family also, traditions. Family traditions. Yeah, but also how much better does a homemade put taste? Uh, amazingly better. You can yeah. choose what alcohol you put into it. So good. And no mixed peel. Yes, because yeah. we both don't like peel mm -mm. in Christmas puddings. I like, what, double the amount of glass hay cherries left? Uh, I think I actually put like quadruple in yours. <laughs> I like the glass hay cherries the most, so Mezzy always makes me a Christmas pudding every year with extra glass hay cherries in it because she loves me. I do. So last week, if you haven't seen the video, we prepared the fruit. Now look at that compared to last week. Let me like, open it up. Oh, we should do a taste test. Oh, yeah. We did speak about that, didn't we? Wow, that looks so good. I know. All right, so, oh, oh wow. <laughs> that smells amazing. All right, so this is our fruit. It's been I'm getting drunk, just sniffing it. <laughs> it's been preparing itself over the last week. Yep. How many times have we turned it? I uh, literally turned it every day. Every day we turned it. I don't think we actually got turned it yesterday. This. No, I did. I oh, flipped did. it around okay. in the cupboard, in the fridge. Yeah. Good. That use, is so good. I use the spoon that I need for later. Sorry. <laughs> wow. That is so good. Yeah. Uh -huh. Sorry. So that Our fruit is red. Wow. Whew. So we're going to just um, prepare like the butter, sugar, egg mix. All right. You tell me what first. to do. So put the... Um, Insert the butterfly. Butterfly. I'll get that. <laughs> Um, and then we're going to set the thermomix for four minutes speed through and we're going to um, add a cube of butter each time. Four minutes speed through? Yeah. And we've already we went the butter cubed. So just a cube by cube. All right. So what we're doing here is adding our butter cube by cube so that it softens it and whips it a little bit. Yeah. And while you're doing that, I'm going to actually prepare the dry ingredients in the bowl here. Okay. So today we're going to use breadcrumbs as opposed to almond mixture. So you can use either or either. Um, or you do I same. like the um, almond version of this cake the best. For all the gluten-free variations we've ever done, there's only two. Where I genuinely prefer <laughs> Do you want the gluten-free. No, it's okay. We'll show you them. <laughs> I genuinely prefer the gluten-free version of the recipe over the like full gluten one, and that's the Christmas puddings. Mm -hmm. And what's the other one, Mez? Um, the. See if you can remember. Cheese puffs. No, the um. Oh, what was it we did in, was it in dinners? Oh, the pumpkin, pumpkin rolls. Pumpkin rolls. Pumpkin rolls. The pumpkin dinner rolls. Yeah. So this is just um, bread that we had left over. Is so, it like sourdough or something? Um, I think it was just, um, what did we not make this week? The, I think it's actually kind of, um, what was the bread I bought? The Italian bread. I can't remember. Anyway. Is it okay notes. that I didn't spend four, four minutes doing that? No, that's fine. Alright. Um, so, so yeah, all the butter's added. Three cups of breadcrumbs. Am I adding that now? No. Now oh, just letting this you're go. You're waiting that to that finish. 
and then it's set finished. timer for one minute speed three and you're slowly adding roughly an egg at a time. All right, that needs to be straight down. How many did I do? I did three, yeah, one more. Did I say speed three? Yeah. All right, one egg at a time, mm -hmm. roughly. Because, yeah, good job. And then I'm adding the flour, so it's just plain flour, which if you were using almond flour, you could just use gluten-free plain flour. And then I'm adding all the spices. Each year I try and actually buy fresh spices, um, just because I prefer my puddings to have the um, fresh well, spices, and I do find they do discolour. He's on the floor. I wish you guys could see what he's doing right now, but he's crawled down <laughs> on the floor behind us. Um, and that's got the bicarb and the salt. What are you doing? Oh my god. Sorry, Ned. So if I can give a tip, um, you guys, on this, if you make sure that your butter is room temperature before you start, you're going to have a better result. Our butter was probably a little bit cold, so I'm going to have to scrape it down and recombine it um, so that it, it works properly. But just make sure your butter is at room temperature before you start. What's next? Um, and then the sugar. What am I doing? Just adding it in. Now, that's the dry ingredients. So I've just combined them by hand. So they're ready to go. Well, that meant to add it in slowly. Or just chuck it in. It's not really going to matter. So at this point, some people have found that their butter mixture actually looks a bit curdled. We found it last happened. year. Um, but it doesn't matter, does it? it do, one, it doesn't matter. It just um, is a combination of many things. Could be your butter was too cold. I think cold. it's the temperature of the butter. Because mine's yeah. on it and it was definitely too cold. Yeah. Your butter could be too cold. It could be the humid climate. So many things. But to be honest, it is not going to make a difference whatsoever to your pudding. Yeah, it looks weird, but it just... It it's really the won't. buttermilk has separated from the butter, I think. Yeah, it won't... You can just keep mixing until it, if you prefer to make it look perfect, it's really not going to make But it doesn't matter because it melts anyway. Yeah, exactly. It's like when you make pastry and you see chunks of butter through your pastry, it, it actually doesn't make a difference to your pastry. Alright, so what have we got next? So now, we are going to um, add the butter to the fruit mixture here. Oh, I'll just stir that through. Okay. You're the boss. This is just um, the way I've found that it seems to combine the best is um, doing it in this format. Do you want me to do this bit? Yeah. This is fun because Mez usually does this for me, you guys. But yeah, once you add this butter mix to the fruit, you really, it really doesn't matter <laughs> what the butter looks like. I know it freaks a few people out, but like I've tried making this pudding in like 45 degree Adelaide days and there's just no helping the butter. <laughs> I can just add a note to the recipe though, to say to do it on, to make sure your butter is at room temperature. Yeah. And just if it does split, it doesn't matter. Am I combining this? Yep. Oh my goodness, this looks so good. Um, now, a tradition that I had as a family growing up from when I was very, very little was when we made our Christmas puddings, everyone had to take their Christmas. turn stirring the Christmas pudding. No shit, this is hard work. Yeah, and the reason why was it was the chance hard that work. you got to make your Christmas wish. Oh. Yeah. Oh, can I make a Christmas wish? Yeah. I didn't know that, Miss. That's very sweet. Yeah. All right, I'm going to make a Christmas wish. So, um, all right, you go. Your turn to make a Christmas wish. Well, what we'll do, hang on, I'll add some of the mix in because this is Oh, because I have to keep stirring. Yeah. All right, go. So, you, I just add a little bit at a time. Um, it doesn't matter if you keep it in your container or you can use like a large bowl. Um, it's really not going to make a difference. I prefer to leave it in the container. Yes. <laughs> you better use that large bowl. 
after your connection about it. I know. I did have a bit of a whinge about the large bowl. Far um, out. Oh, sorry, I elbowed you in the boots. But you deserve it after what happened with the large bowl incident. Um, so the oh, reason why I'm thinking work. actually keeping it in the container is if you're making... Not the large bowl? No, but well, there's a... There's, it's behind it. You guys didn't hear <laughs> how annoyed she was about this large bowl. Hey, Grant! <laughs> she's not using the large bowl! What? She's not using the large bowl! Why did you use the large bowl? She's not using it! What bowl is she using? This! Because it's easier! Oh, it doesn't work because it's not in silver bowls. <laughs> Come and tell them! That's the song! Come tell them! the song? Come tell them about Mez and her large Jingle bowl. Jingle bells, silver bowls. <laughs> what happened this afternoon, Grant? Tell us. Why. Well, apparently Mez went into a little conniption. <laughs> and she said, my bowls are not big enough. And I said, my bowls are plenty big enough, Mez. She, <laughs> she said, was I want to see your silver bowls. And I was like, I'm old, but they're not silver. I wanted a bigger bowl, okay? <laughs> this and fit. how much were you insistent that we couldn't use two bowls? We had to use the one big bowl. We can't be separated. I can't be separated. I can't be separated. <laughs> and now she's not even using it, you guys. Yeah. yeah Alright, your ridiculous. turn, because that's hard work. Hey, what did you, you say you that swap? everyone does it? Alright, swap. Hey, what happens when everyone does it? Yeah, you'll get to make a Christmas wish if you hang out. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. a bit of spite. Go, make your Christmas wish. Not out loud. Oh, we both your clothes are still on, so. <laughs> she is <laughs> <laughs> He did ask me if I wanted to go for a swim later. Skinny dip. <laughs> For a skinny dip, and I was like, You're gonna make me uh, some martinis then, Messi. You guys can because my my um CCTV out the back isn't on at the moment. <laughs> it was on before. Okay. All right, your turn, Mess. Did you make yeah, a yeah. Christmas wish? I did. Thank you. So the reason why I would say keep it in the container is if you're making little ones and you're um, batch sort of steaming them in the thermomix, and say you only have one thermomix, is um that you can, because obviously it's got butter and eggs in and you're making Christmas puddings in summer, it's not ideal to leave this out on the bench. So you'd pack your little pudding things, put, um, it normally fits three, sometimes four of the mini ones. Um, then you can just go and put this in the fridge until you need to make your next one. Have you made your Christmas wish? Okay, Christmas wish. Don't say it out loud. I didn't. I'm sure you know what I was actually Christmas wishing. You're not getting a rooster, Mess. <laughs> Mess wants a cock for Christmas. <laughs> so, to put context, where, where Nick and I live, we're on the community page, and there's currently a rooster on the loose. Did you really wish for the rooster? No. Oh, good, because you're not having a black... So I, said, a I said Mess wants a cock for Christmas. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. What did she say? She wants a what? She wants the rooster for Christmas. Absolutely. And I said, Mess, you're not one getting one a cock for second. Christmas. Fuck <laughs> that. <laughs> Rude. So, anyway, Nick keeps commenting and saying, No, Mess, you're not having You're not having the rooster for Christmas. But this yeah. rooster. She's obsessed with chickens. So you guys am. don't understand. She's obsessed. Obsessed. Is so, that all? This rooster. Or is that all that got to go in there? No. No, that's it. That's your Christmas pudding done. That's all that then. That. So what I'll do with that is I will freeze it yeah. in a bag. Oh, because you're going to keep making it. And then I'll keep it. making more pudding. Because she's crazy. So now I've brought all the options all right. that you can actually do with your puddings. Here is your mini one. All right. So let's talk about this for a second, you guys. So this is a mini mini pudding tin. Yeah. I think it's, it's Avanti. Avanti brand. It's like it takes 250 mils. Delicious. <laughs> um, yeah, it takes 250 mils. That's not 250 mils. That would be 125, I reckon. Oh, it might be. Once you... It's small, anyway. Yeah, and they make perfect little mini... They're so cute. They're so cute. They would serve, like... Two. Two, yeah. Or one if you're really in like a... Like, multiple serves. Um, Christmas feeling. But it's... Christmas pudding is quite rich. So, I always grease my little... Puddings. Show us how you crease, grease them. So just put some butter around. Is that how you do it, doll? Yeah. Pretty easy. <laughs> you nutter. There you go. You love me. And then um, you can actually compact so it. So how much do I put in? Just put it in, slide it, and compact it down. Yeah. Yep. Push it down. Like fill it all the way up? Yeah. Like probably leave maybe two mil off the top. 
Am I stressing you out? You guys, Mez does this every year. And how many years have you been doing this for, Mezzy? Oh, uh, over half my life. Probably, yes, since I was about 20. So about 50 years? <laughs> yeah. No. 20, about 25 years? About 25 years? Yeah. How, how did I do? Yeah, pretty good. Are you going to fire me? Yeah, I would even that out a bit because your, All right, you middle, your middle is not... I've never done this before, you guys, by the way. This is the very first time I've ever made Christmas puddings in my life. Christmas puddings are definitely not something that we grew up with. It's definitely not a thing that a Greek family would eat at Christmas time. But it's since Mezzy and I have been friends, so in the last five years, yeah. Mez has given me one every Christmas. And it's like the best thing. I look forward to Christmas because I get to eat Mezzy's at like midnight when I feel like a snack. <laughs> I'll come downstairs and I'll get Christmas pudding cold out the fridge and just put butter on it. Do you really? Yeah. <laughs> and I always buy you custard and cream and everything. I'm so. just about cold Christmas pudding with butter. It's so good. Hang on one second. So, you have the lid. I don't, wash my hands. I don't grease the lid. The reason why I don't grease the lid is I've cut out all little... Um, what do you call it? Paper. Baking paper. If you don't Things. cut out a baking paper, do you? I would, would you grease, grease the lid. lid? Definitely. Why don't you just grease the lid then? Because it actually, I don't know. I just you find like it better that, with the paper. Yeah, it just slides out a bit better as well. Um, so I just put the paper and on. And maybe top. protects it from moisture too. Yeah. Yep. So and then these moist. actually Ooh. click in that the That sounds so satisfying. I did. And then look. How cute is that? Done. All right, so that's done. Now we have to repeat this four more times. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is... Sh let's show them how we would put it in the... Sim yeah. How we, we would put it in the simmering basket. Yes. Yeah, so um, in the Veroma tray, sorry. I put about a litre of water in there. If you're doing... Um, they can't see the machine anymore because oh, I moved it out of the way. That's okay. I'll just move it back. And I've got the barium in here, ready to go. We can move that over. All right, so deep steaming tray or varoma tray. Yep. Pop that in. And then your little puddings go in there. And um, I'll do one too if you want. Yep. So... You do that, I'll fill one. Now it'll fit normally quite comfortably three minis in there and they will cook in 60 minutes on- The um, mini ones? Yeah, I would preheat your water. I reckon this would be better to do with a spoon, eh? Yeah. Um, if you preheat your water, they'll definitely be done in 60 minutes. You don't even need to test them, I just know. <laughs> I've done so many over the years. Can you overcook them? No. I mean, if you bone dry your thermomix and everything. So, that I can't believe one. how easy this is, Mez. I know. You've been taking all the credit all these years for being <laughs> the pudding queen, and it's like the easiest thing in the world. So, this is a medium one. This one actually fits in the thermomix Verona as well. What brand is that? I don't know. It's one I just got. Years ago, but you can they don't sell pudding molds. Have you yeah, checked if they're on the little shop? But like the bigger ones that they, I don't know, I haven't looked. These are the ceramic ones. And what I'll do is I'll do a big one now and I'll show you what- How do you, I do? Amazing. I'll show you what you need to do if you wanted to cook one of these larger ones on the stove. Oh, I'm so excited about this. So if you're using a larger metal one, You'll note in the notes on the recipe that I've written to calico the top of the larger ones if you're cooking on the stove. All right, so hang on, let's slow down. So if you don't have a Thermomix or you're choosing to do this on the stove in a steamer and you're using a large pudding bowl, calico instead of paper, instead of baking paper. No, you still baking paper and you, I'm about to oh, show so them what you do. Oh, so you do baking do. paper and then you do calico. Yeah. Yeah, cool, so let's do that now. So I just didn't understand, so. 
That's now right. I understand. So you, the reason why you calico the top when you're boiling on the stove. So should I get these going? Now? Yeah, just get it going. Um, the reason why you do that is the calico makes it easier for you to pull the pudding out of the pot. Ah. Yeah. So Speed what? Um, I just do four. Speed four. Mm -hmm. I'm crazy mm -hmm. now. Yep. I'll just do it on speed two for now. And then pop the lid on. Now these are going to steam away. And I'll move it out of the way so it's... Someone said, where did you get the little pudding tubs from? Can you get them here in SA? Yes. Where? Um, so, Minimax. Sell Minimax. Them. Um, kitchen Warehouse sell them. Kitchen Warehouse. It's much easier with this spoon. Ever Everton Online also sell them. Everton and Kitchen Warehouse, I think, are even the same company, eh? Are they? I'm pretty sure. Huh. Um, literally any of those um, cooking websites, even some of those cake um, supply places have them as well. So, all right, so that one, baking paper on top. Baking paper on top. Then the alfoil. Oh, this is because... The issue you've got with doing it on, I'm just going to move this over to the side. The issue you've got with cooking on the stove is potential water leaking in. So, our foil. Hey, buddy. Come give me a cuddle. Aww. Uh, high five. <laughs> we won't say why. Um, then, tie around because this bowl has a lid. All right, so this is to stop water from leaking into the puddings while they're steaming. So do you find the Thermomix method is better? Oh, it's just um, because in different climates as well, the water on the stove will evaporate and you constantly have to be home to watch that. Oh, whereas with the Thermomix one, you can set this and go out for an hour. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, can you just put your finger on the knot, please? Thank you. Slip knot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're a jokester. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So, there is that. And then you would do your calico on top of that. So, how do we do that? So, I have a feeling... I'm going to have to do a dummy run with a tea towel because these are all my Why have mini. you got little Christmas things on them? Because everyone Gosh, who I've... Liz, you're so cute. Everyone who I've made puddings for always returns the calico to me. I never year. have. I know. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know the calico was reusable. Yeah. Um, Claire Bosworth. Can I use mini ramekin type paper containers, then baking paper, and then alfoil and the Roma? I don't have pudding yeah. containers yeah 100% yep so you don't need specialized pudding containers you can use Dario Dario molds yeah. but just and then baking method. paper and then foil and twine yeah you won't need to put the calico on if you're doing it like that Vanessa um, can't wait to do it in the Thermomix we made it look super easy yes so yeah this, so I, I would normally put the I'd need oh it might actually work let me try. It might actually work. All right. Looking just at the size. So, same thing as what I did with the alfoil. <laughs> is um, it looks so cute. Put it over like a handkerchief. And then, Look how cute she looks. Um, you look really cute, though. Thanks. I try. Weren't we talking about little Danish girls today? Like we were. Little German. Okay, and then I need your finger again. Well. Um... Just tying it. This is just normal butcher's twine or just that stripy twine that, you know. Yeah, butcher's twine. Done to me. <laughs> you looked cute. <laughs> um, so that's just like that. And then all you do is you're just tying your two corners. Oh, this is so homely. Together. You're like the Ceramix Martha Stewart. <laughs> done. Without the. Um, and then the other two foam. opposites. Cute. Done. And then I like this method because it's just adorable. Yeah, it is, isn't it? And you'll see why, because obviously a ceramic bowl doesn't have a lid. 
and look how easy it is to pick that up. Imagine if it was boiling hot and you've got it, you need to pull it out of the pot to cool down. You're able to do it without burning your That's hand so off. That's so clever. Yeah. You're clever. Yeah. Done. And then, um, what next? That's pretty much it. Like, Don't you want to show a few more facts? Oh, yeah. Back? So, how I, um, I found these on Amazon and they fit perfectly a little mini pudding. So, I just thought there's different ways that you can wrap them if you wanted to gift them. What are they called on Amazon? Um, I just did, um, what did I write? Christmas pudding bags or something or pudding bags. They're these cute little pudding bags and they say Merry Christmas on them. Yeah. So these ones, where's my little... What are you looking for? The, the ribbon. String? Yeah, the little cute little ribbon I just pulled off. Oh, it's on the floor. So these, imagine that's the mini cooked pudding. I'm not going to use that one. Imagine that's the mini cook I pudding. I was taught to stick the wooden spoon through the tie to stop it touching the bottom of the pot. Oh. That's also a good way. Yeah. Oh, stuffed that up. Anyway, I'm going to use this one. So, yeah, I just have the calico. So when the pudding's finished and cooked um, and cooled down, um, I take it out, I wrap it twice in cling film, and then I uh, wrap them up. Yeah, so she, she takes it out of the mould, she du double wraps it in glad wrap, and then she wraps them up like little presents. Yeah. So, um, and sometimes I'll put like a little tree ornament on the string or yeah. something. Or like a little, um, sometimes you've done those cute little reindeers. Yeah. Little gold reindeers. Um, just to make it look Christmassy. Yeah. Um, yeah, anything really that and the best part is you guys the gluten-free version is better than the gluten version in my opinion it's so much better i mean and I'm, you can get like nice ribbon you don't have to use like the little oh, i mean obviously she so rushed it that i rushed that yeah but oh um, and she has fancy scissors that does the zigzags the, the, yeah Sorry. the zig that's it like the zigzag that one's badly done but yeah, like the zigzag. Because she's calico. Thermomix Martha Stewart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I can't think of anything else. Like We didn't put any vanilla bean. No. So the reason why I put that out is some years I will actually chuck vanilla in. It is not on the recipe, but feel free to oh. chuck vanilla in yeah. if you want. You're getting sweaty standing on top I know. of that steamer. Totally. I was like this, and it started steaming up, and I'm <laughs> like... <laughs> Why is it? Why am I hot flushing? <gasps> but, I literally just gave myself a facial. <laughs> but we've had a few people say, oh, um, how long do they keep for? Honestly, um, with the amount of alcohol, especially if you're doing the full two cups, they could last years as long as you keep them um, like in a cool, dark place or kept the in the fridge. Um, There's and, nothing better than finding one of Mez's puddings in the back of your fridge like six months later. Yeah. And like if you wanted to enrich it further, um, every six months, just put like a tablespoon more of the alcohol, like poke it a bit. And it's like a vintage pudding. Yeah, it becomes a vintage pudding. So yeah. Um, also, like if you wanted to add nuts to your pudding, I did a nut version last year and added pistachios. Oh yeah. Um, so you just reduce down your breadcrumbs or your almond meal slightly. And substitute and the substitute. remaining amount yes. with the dry. Yep. So it's a very versatile pudding, can be adapted um, in any way that you'd like it. Um, feel free do to Do you experiment. remove the pudding from the mould while it's still hot? Or no. do you allow them to cool completely? The best thing to do is to allow it to cool completely because it may um, lose its form okay. if you pull it out hot. Right. So, so allow the pudding to cool completely before you yeah, take it out of the mould. And um, if by chance you haven't um, greased it enough, then just use like a, a butter knife around the outside to just loosen it up a little bit or a spatula. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Skinnies, for tuning in to part two of our pudding recipe. 
Um, we'll go live next week maybe and show them yeah. the cooked puddings yeah. and just a couple of different ways to maybe wrap them. Yeah, and what you can serve with them because we've Ooh. got... We do have Bailey's oh. custard. Yeah, we do. We should do a whipped cream recipe. Yeah, we should. What else should we do? The ice cream would be good with it. You know that Christmas ice cream I yeah. did years ago? The, the fruit the pudding one? Fruit meats one. Yeah. yeah. Yum. Yeah, so many options. So stay tuned next week. Mez and I will go live and show off the final product. But if you're going to cook along and you haven't yet started your fruit, check out the recipe, rest, the video that we did last Friday and um, get your fruit on. There's still plenty of time before Christmas. Yeah. Uh, and you don't need to have the pudding moulds. You can start your fruit now and then go looking for your pudding moulds. Yeah, yeah, 100%. All right, thank you, Skinnies. You have a wonderful weekend. We'll check in with you all on Sunday. And we love you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Tag us if you need any info, Skinnies.